In this video you'll learn how to create a joystick controller like this one. Go left, right and fly wherever you want. Ok, let's go. Similar to the previous tutorial about mobile buttons, you need to Enable the Emulate Touch for Mouse checkbox if you want to test touch buttons inside the Gadoo debug window. You can find this on the project settings, input device, pointing. Next, create a new scene. Let's name it Mobile Joystick, it will be a canvas layer. Inside, let's add a touchscreen button and add a texture to it. Now let's add a shape to have a precise area of detecting the touch. Let's add a script to this scene. In the input function, we need to catch the input event screen touch and input event screen drag events. Extra, we need to check if the touch screen button is pressed. Let's test it by printing the event position. The console is printing messages when I clicked inside the button or drag from the button. Now we need to calculate move vector from the middle of the circle. To do this, we need the middle of the circle and event position. To get the middle point, we need to know the size of the texture. Of course, it's only one of many ways to do it. In my case, it's 128 by 128 pixels, so the center will be on the point 64, 64. We can use this as a vector from the touch screen button position, which is right here. The event position is the place where we touch the screen. Let's back to the script and use these values. In the new function, calculate move vector, we can calculate texture center, which will be the touch screen button position, plus vector 64, 64 in my case. Next, the move vector will be the event position, subtract the texture center position. We can pass the event position as a function parameter. We can also normalize it to have always the same length of the vector. Let's check the values on the console. And you can see that everything is fine. And now we can use these vectors for the player. To do this, let's create a custom signal use move vector. Next, let's emit the signal with an argument. It will be our move vector. Now, we need to add this scene to the player scene. Add our custom signal to the player script. We also need to add the move vector variable in the function parameters. Now we can use this vector, for example, in the move and slide function to move the kinematic body player. The vector length is one unit, so let's increase it. In this case, the player will have speed of 128 pixels per second. It depends on the project. More about this function you can find on my gravity tutorial. Let's test it, and it's working when I clicked or dragged the button. The last thing to do is to emit signals also when the player holds the button. In the joystick script, let's add two variables, move vector and joystick active. When we press the button or drag, the joystick active should be true. The second condition is when the event is also input event screen touch, but the event is not pressed. It means that the user has stopped holding the button. Now, in the physic process function, let's do a simple function if joystick active, then emits a signal with move vector. We can also add a little inner circle sprite for a better user experience. Just set the position of the event position. We also need to toggle the visibility of that sprite when the joystick is active. And everything is working. Like the video if you like it, dislike if you didn't. Thank you very much for watching, have a nice day and see you on the next video. Bye!